the portico of Circe's palace, evening, a youth, Circe, not present in the scene, the youth, faster, faster, O oh Circe, goddess, with the wild thronging train, the bright procession of eddying forms sweep through my soul. Thou standest smiling down on me, thy right arm leaned up against the column there, props thy soft cheek. Thy left holds hanging loosely, the deep cup ivy cinctured I held but now. Is it evening then, so soon? I see the night dews clustered in thick beads dim the agate brooch stones on thy white shoulder. Cool night wind, too, blows through the portico, stirs thy hair, goddess, waves thy white robe. Circe, whence art thou sleeping? The youth. When the white dawn first through the rough fir planks of my hut by the chestnuts up at the valley head came breaking, goddess, I sprang up. I threw round me my dappled fawn skin, passing out from the wet turf where they lay by the hut door. I snatched up my vine crown, my first staff, all drenched in dew. Came swift down to join the rout early gathered in the town round the temple, Yacus's white fane on yonder hill. Quick I passed, following the woodcutter's cart track down the valley, I saw on my left, through the beaches, thy palace goddess, smokeless, empty. Trembling I entered, beheld the court all silent, the lion sleeping, on the altar this bowl. I drank, goddess, and sunk down here, sleeping, on the steps of thy portico. Circe, foolish boy, why tremblest thou? Thou lovest it, then my wine. What's there more of it? See how glows through the delicate flushed marble the red creaming liquor. Strung with dark seeds. Well, drink then. I chide thee not, deny thee not, my bowl. Come, stretch forth thy hand, then, Circe. Drink, drink again. The youth. Thanks, O gracious one. Oh, the sweet fumes again, more soft on me, more subtle winding than Pan's flute music, faint, faint. Ah, me. Again the sweet sleeper. Circe. Hist, thou within there, come forth, Ulysses. Art tired with hunting? While we range the woodland, see what the day brings. Ulysses. Ever new magic, hast thou then lured hither, wonderful goddess, by thy art, the young, languid-eyed Ampelus, Yacchus's darling, or some youth beloved of Pan, or Pan and the nymphs? That he sits bending downward, his... White, delicate neck to the ivy-wreathed marge of thy cup, the bright, glancing vine leaves that crown his hair, falling forwards, mingling with the dark ivy plants, his fawn skin half untied, smeared with red wine stains. Who is he, that he sits overweighed by fumes of wine and sleep, so late in thy portico? What youth, goddess, what guest of gods or mortals? Circe, hist, he wakes, I lured him not hither, Ulysses, nay, ask him. The youth, who, who speaks? Ah, who comes forth to thy side, goddess, from within? How shall I name him, this spare, dark-featured, quick-eyed stranger? Ah, and I see, too, the sailor's bonnet, his short coat, travelled, tarnished, with one arm bare. Art thou not he, he whom fame... This long time rumours the gravest guest of Circe brought by the waves. Art thou he, stranger? The wise Ulysses, Laertes' son. I am Ulysses, and thou too, sleeper. Thy voice is sweet. It may be thou hast followed through the islands some divine bard, by age taught many things, age and the muses, and heard him delighting the chiefs of people. In the banquet and learnt his songs of gods and heroes of war and arts and peopled cities in land or built by the grey sea if so then hail 
I honor and welcome thee. The youth. Oh, the gods are happy. They turn on all sides their shining eyes and see below them the earth and man. They see Tiresias sitting staff in hand on the warm grassy Esipus's bank, his robe drawn over his old sightless head revolving inly, the doom of Thebes. They see the centaurs in the upper glens of Pelion in the streams where red-buried ashes fringe the clear brown shallow pools with streaming flanks and heads reared proudly snuffling the mountain wind. They see the Indian drifting knife in hand his frail boat moored to a floating isle thick matted with large leaved low creeping melon plants and the dark cucumber. He he reaps and stows them drifting drifting round him round his green harvest plot flow the cool lake waves. The mountains ring them they see the Scythian on the wide step, unharnessing his wheeled house at noon. He tethers his beast down and makes his meal, mares milk and bread baked on the embers. All around the boundless waving grass plains stretch thick starred with saffron and the yellow holly hook and the flag-weaved iris flowers sitting in the cart. He makes his meal before him the long miles alive with the bright green lizards and the springing busted fowl, the track a straight back line, furrows with soil, here and there clustered of lonely mounds, topped with rough-hewn grey, rain-bleared statues, overpeer the sunny waste. They see the ferry on the broad, clay-laden, gloam, Chorasmian stream thereon with snort and strain, two horses, strongly swimming, tow the ferry boat, with woven ropes to either bow, firm harnessed by the name, a chief with stout and shouted shaken spear stands at the prow and guides them but astern the cowering merchants in long robes sit pale beside their wealth of silk bells and of some balsam drops of gold and ivory of turquoise earth and amethyst jasper and chalcedony and milk barred onyx stones the loaded boat swings groaning in the yellow reddies the gods behold them they see the heroes sitting in the dark ship on the foamless, long, heaving, violet sea. At sunset, nearing the happy isles. These things, Ulysses, these wide bards also behold and sing. But oh, what labour, pr prince, what pain. They too can see, Tiresias, but the gods who give them vision added this law that they should bear too his groping blindness, his dark foreboding, his scorn white hairs, bear Hera's anger through a life lengthened to seven ages. They see the centres on Pelion, then they feel they too the maddening wine swell their large veins to bursting in wild pain, they feel the bitter spears of the grim Lapithae and Theseus drive the crashing through their bones they feel on high a jutting rock in the red stream alcmena's dreadful son ply his bow such a price the gods exact for song to become what we sing they see the indian on his mountain lake but squalls make their skiff reel and worms in the unkind spring have gnawed their melon harvest to the heart they see the scythian but long frost parch them in winter time on the bare step to they too fade like grass, they crawl like shadows forth in spring. They see the merchants on the Oxus's stream, but care must visit first them too and make them pale, whether through whirling sand a cloud of desert robber horse has burst upon the caravan, or greedy kings in their old cities the way passes through, crushed them with tolls, or fever airs on some great river's marge, moan them down far from home. They see the heroes near the harbour, but they share in their lives, and form a violent toil in Thebes, the seven-gated Thebes, or Troy, where the echoing oars of Argo first startled the unknown sea. The old Salinas came lolling in the sunshine from the dewy forest coverts, there his way at noon. Sitting by me while his fawns down at the waterside sprinkled and smoothed his drooping garland, he told me these things. But I, Ulysses, 
sitting on the warm steps looking over the valley all day long, have seen without pain, without labor, sometimes a wild-haired maniac, sometimes a fawn with torches, and sometimes for a moment passing through, dark stems flowing robed, the beloved, the desired, the divine beloved, the Arcus. Ah, cool night wind, tremulous stars, a glimmering water, fitful, earth murmur, dreaming woods, a golden-haired, strangely smiling goddess, and thou proved much enduring, wave-tossed wanderer. Who can stand still? Ye fade, ye swim, ye waver before me. The cup, again, faster, faster, O Circe goddess, all at the wild thronging train, the bright procession of eddying forms sweep through my soul. 